Hey guys, this is Pesh from Beehome.com and it's time for some vintage Bebop. So you always talk about cool new Android apps on the Play Store, but here's a statement. Open source apps are the coolest. Why? Well, they have the community, their code is publicly accessible, the big boys don't track you in these apps, and these apps are mostly free. So today I'm going to tell you eight super cool open source Android apps that are not very well known, but like I said, they're super cool. Let's start. First up is Floris Board, which is an open source and privacy focused keyboard. I mean, with apps like Gboard, you always know that Google is tracking you at all times. And this is something that everybody wants. Uh, I mean, nobody wants, nobody wants that. Now this is where open source keyboard apps come in and Floris Board is the best of the lot. It mostly has all the features you see in apps like Gboard or even SwiftKey like number row, one-handed mode, gesture typing, custom height, built-in clipboard, etc. It even has themes including a Gboard one if you really miss it badly. I also like the options in the top bar. There's select all, cut, copy, paste, and you press this and you get the undo, redo buttons and more. It's awesome. Now this is a keyboard app that supports most of the global languages, but there are no regional languages. So that's one thing to know. So iPhones have this really cool ask app not to track feature, which even if you're an Android fan, you still have to appreciate it. I mean, I know it hurts, but let's appreciate it. Now Android has no such feature, obviously, but you can still stop trackers in apps with tracker control. See, this is a great open source app that lets you control the data collection, the tracking in apps. See, when you turn this on, it starts working as a VPN, tracking the network communications apps are using. Then it divides trackers into essential, social, etc. So if you see a third party tracker or something weird, you can just block it like this. I also like the fact that you can also completely block internet access to specific apps. And there's also a traffic log which shows you all the apps using up the data and which IP addresses they are connecting to so that you can see if they're connected to any weird servers. Now this will also help you see if any apps are using data or tracking you in the background. This is useful, right? See, I'm someone who tries out a lot of cool new wallpaper apps, so I'm not someone who will be impressed with your usual wallpaper app. But you know what? Prism is one app that has me super impressed. First off, unlike a lot of open source apps, this does not have an outdated UI. I mean, it looks modern and great. And the wallpapers here range from beautiful to very cool. As you can see, there are so many wallpaper categories, be it flat, shapes, amulet, stock, abstract, etc. And it's all free. Plus, I like the features too. I can tap on each wallpaper to get a different color version. I can edit wallpapers with different filters, including a blur filter, which I think a lot of you guys will appreciate. Lastly, it has these super cool home screen setups from the community with the wallpaper, icon pack, and widget apps mentioned. So yeah, super cool. See, there are times when I need to convert a video for better compatibility and you know what? The apps on Play Store are just weird. They have these big in-app purchases, full page ads. It's not a great experience. When I entered this, this is an open source app called Video Transcoder. I know, generic name and also very generic UI, but it works really well. This uses the open source program FFMPEG and it lets you change formats. There's MP4, ABI, WebM and more. I can also change the codec, the FPS, the resolution, and even change the audio settings. Now I have tried it out with even 4K 60 FPS videos and it works well. And one more thing, you can also use it to extract audio from videos, which I think will come in pretty handy for a lot of people. Now I know Launcher is a fairly popular launcher app that brings the whole pixel experience look on any Android phone. Now for those who don't know, Launcher is actually an open source app and I'm not talking about the Launcher, Launcher 2 that's available on the Play Store. I'm talking about Launcher 12 which is still in its alpha state but that brings the whole Material U pixel experience look on any Android phone, even the phones with the older Android versions. I mean, this is the launcher and as you can see, you get the whole Material U themed icons. Also, the whole launcher UI also changes the accent depending on the wallpaper. I can just change the wallpaper and see how the accent changes, be it on the app drawer, this pop-up menu on the home screen, the folders, etc. Now, this is the launcher, so it's not as elaborate as proper Android 12, but it's nice if you want to get a slight taste of Material U. Plus, it helps that Launcher 12 is feature-packed and it's free.
See, after the whole ES File Explorer fiasco, I have trust issues with free file managers in the Play Store. But you know what? Material Files is different. Material Files is open source, it's secure, and it's really clean and nice. I mean, here's the app and look at how simple and minimal this is. It's great and this supports Material U. Now this is open source and free, but along with the usual file manager features, my favorite feature in Material Files is support for multiple windows. See, I can open up a new window like this, and this will open up multiple instances of the app. And so I can just move files between these windows pretty easily. But apart from that, I also like that the app lets you create home screen shortcuts for any files or folders. Yeah, it's handy. Next up is Aurora Store. Now for people who don't know, Aurora Store is actually an open source Google Play Store client. So that means it's super useful for anyone who wants to de-Google or anyone who has a custom ROM which does not have the Google services. Now I have mentioned this app in the past, but I'm mentioning it again because two things, it's got a really nice update recently. And second, it's very useful. See the UI now is better categorized with proper app sections and there's a new floating search icon, which is cool. There are also new themes with the pitch black theme, which is my personal favorite. Now this new UI is definitely nice, but you still get all of the useful Aurora store features. Be it the app listings that show the trackers that app has, the ability to download apps without logging in, or be it the ability to change your device to download apps that are maybe not available for your phone. So yeah, Aurora store is great. So I'm gonna end this list with a very simple utility app called Next Track. Now this is an app that lets you do one thing and that is change tracks via the volume button. So here's a song playing on YouTube music. Now when the screen is off, I can double click on the volume up button to go to the next track. I can also double click on the volume down button to go to the previous track. Now this is something I've seen in a lot of custom ROMs. So it's interesting that this works without root on every single phone. I mean, this is handy because there are times when you quickly want to change tracks without looking at your phone screen. Now, next track is obviously open source and it's free to install, but some of its features are locked behind an in-app purchase of 180 rupees. Overall, this list kind of proves my point. Open source apps are the coolest. Now, all of these apps are free and some of them are available on Android, but you'll find some of them also on the Play Store as well. Either ways, I leave all the links in the description down below. Also, if you have any other great open source apps that you know that we missed out on, make sure to comment down below so that people know. Also, give this video a like, make sure to share it and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.